Okay, here we're going to look at a genetic engineering summary. And then after the summary, we're going to go through a couple stages in experimentation. So starting with the general summary, uh, we're looking at genetically engineered animals. It can also apply to plants. Uh, it's the same basic process of changing or modifying different genes in an organism. So to start off with uh, gene cloning, I'm going to go through just the highlights here. So step one is a small circular DNA molecule called plasmids, you may remember that from our previous videos, are removed from bacteria cells. These plasmids serve, serve as vectors, which are molecules that carry genes of interest. And that gene of interest could be just something we want to multiply, something that we're interested in developing. Uh, let me go through a uh, laxy gene would be an example. Uh, antibiot antibiotic resistance genes also could be added here. We see restriction sites. If you remember from our restriction enzymes, those are areas uh, where there might be specific cut sites. And again, those plasmids are those small circular uh, regions of DNA found in prokaryotic cells, in this case, bacteria. DNA containing the gene of interest is also taken um, from its original cell. So this cell here contains our gene of interest, whatever gene we want to multiply. We're taking it out of this nucleus, so this would be a eukaryotic cell, and we are going to put it into our plasmid. So step three is restriction enzyme. I uh, recognize this is a specific re restriction site, and it's a short sequence about four to eight bases long. And this is a specific region here, restriction site, where that DNA is going to be cut. If you remember from our restriction enzyme video, here we're going to cut the DNA. We're going to cause these things called sticky ends. These sticky ends are bases that don't have pairs, and they want to pair up. They want to join, and that's part of the sticky ends. Part four, it breaks apart the DNA, these restriction enzymes, leaving overhanging regions called sticky ends. These restriction enzymes cut open the circular plasmids, and the same enzyme cuts our gene of interest. So it's important that the same enzyme is used because we want these to rejoin to one another, so we want them cut the very same specific sequence. Moving on from step four, and we left right here at step four, we have step five, these sticky ends of the restriction fragments attach to one another via base pairing. Again, A binds with T, G binds with C. That's the same thing that happens. The gene of interest gets included into some of the plasmids, forming recombinant plasmids. So it's important here, some of the plasmids. We like to think that every single plasmid takes in that particular gene of interest, but that's not always the case. Uh, so they form weak hydrogen bonds. The gene of interest gets included. Uh, and other plasmids close right back up, remaining unchanged. So we can see an example here, the red indicates the gene of interest. Some plasmids basically get separated with the restriction enzymes and get rejoined, <clears throat> and they did not take in the gene of interest. DNA ligase links our bonds together, uh, makes bonds permanent by attaching nucleotides to each other with those phosphodiester bonds you may remember from methylation. These phosphodiester bonds are joining that ligation and they're forming now a larger plasmid, but still that circular form of DNA. The plasmids are mixed with bacteria. Some of them take up the plasmids in the process called transformation. That should also sound familiar. You can hopefully see a lot of these terms are coming back into this one big summary of genetic engineering. So our unchanged plasmids here don't have the little red, and our recombinant plasmids do. And some of those, both unchanged and recombinant, are taken up by our bacteria cells. Moving on from step seven to step eight, the plasmids here with our laxy gene turn the bacteria blue. In the recombinant plasmids, the inserted gene interrupts the laxy gene and the bacteria remain their original color. Bacteria which do not take up any plasmids also remain uncolored. This is used for a way to identify what bacteria may have taken up our gene of interest. Antibiotics can also be added because the plasmid contains genes of antibiotic resistance. So other than just inserting our gene of interest for whatever that may be, it could be produced insulin or something, we also introduce antibiotic resistance genes. What these allow us to do or when we're genetic engineering something is to select for those cells that took up our gene of interest. Those cells that took up our gene of interest also get this antibiotic resistance gene so that when we add antibiotics, you can see those that did not take up our plasmid end up dying. Only those cells that have the antibiotic resistance genes will end up surviving. Those genes, those bacteria that have those genes for antibiotic resistance also have our gene of interest. And that's an important step here. Step 10, 
The bacteria are then sorted by color, isolating the bacteria which took up the plasmid containing the gene of interest, and the uncolored bacteria are then allowed to reproduce. So we simply have selected, as we can see here, these bacteria, these blue bacteria in this case, are selected against. They're not taken up. So we could use antibiotic, or we can use coloration sometimes. The key part here is we want to generate genetic engineering. We want to <coughs> isolate the bacteria that have our gene of interest. And this is a process which we go through and do that. There's four stages to the genetic engineering experiment. This is a large view here. If, if you see here, this is the generally all the um, steps that I just went through in more detail. But we also have these stages when we're looking at an experiment. So stage one, some terms we might become familiar with, cleaving DNA. Large number of fragments are produced and separated by electrophoresis. There'll be a separate video on this, but in the quick summary, what we're doing, we're taking our long DNA and we are putting it into wells. We're separating out, we're chopping that DNA up into different sections, then we're separating it based on size. Larger fragments stay up closer to where we originally uh, put the whole um, slug of DNA, and the smaller fragments are able to travel further. More on that when we do electrophoresis. It's because it's pulled by current. That's where the term electro comes in. Stage two, producing a recombinant DNA. Again, these vectors, important term here. Site of cleavage. Cleavage here is referring to separating our DNA. And these are done by restriction enzymes. Vectors are plasmids, or sometimes viruses, that carry foreign DNA into the host cell. The vector DNA is cut with the same enzyme as the source DNA, thus allowing the two to join. Not only do we need to cut the host plasmid to form the sticky ends, we also need to cut the DNA to take out the gene of interest we want to add in. We want them both cut with the same restriction enzyme so that they bind together and form this, ni this nice neat bond here. Cloning. Host cells are usually bacteria. As the bacteria cell reproduces, it forms a clone containing the fragment-bearing vector. Again, all we're doing is using bacteria because they multiply so rapidly. For example, E. coli can multiply every 20 minutes, uh, and we're basically multiplying that gene of interest very quickly, generating a lot of plasmids, cloning those, generating a lot of the genes. We have a screening process. So the primary screen of clone library eliminates clones without the vectors, those that don't have the gene of interest, or clones with vectors that don't contain DNA. In certain cases, here we have the example of our DNA fragment and our vector. This is the recombinant vector that we want, not all cells will take up this particular plasmid. So we'll just take up the vector without the gene of interest, and that's how we have a screening process. It could be antibiotic resistance. It could also be based on color. And bacteria colonies are going on agar. You can see here, it's a nice tea streak. That screening, again, as I mentioned, antibiotic resistance. Ampicillin is a very common antibiotic that's used. We um, take our cells, we put them on uh, those that have an ampicillin, those that have our gene of interest also have that um, antibiotic gene and they're able to break down ampicillin and they're able to survive. Wild type or general cells are not able to do that. So we ensure the cells that are left are the ones that have our gene of interest because they also have antibiotic resistance. It's a selecting agent. Uh, beta galactidase is another way. <clears throat> this is looking at color. So the white colonies have the plasmids with the foreign insert. Blue colonies have plasmids without the insert. So we would be selecting for the white colonies here. And basically what's happening here is we're interrupting the normal um, sequence of the genes, causing the cell to lose its color. That white color are the cells that we want. This again shows our sticky ends forming from our plasmid that was cut with a restriction enzyme, ampicillin resistance gene, and then we can see the genome with the, in this case, the plasmids, with the gene of interest located here. And we need a screening process because as you can see here, not every bacteria cell took up the vector with the gene that we wanted. So just a quick summary, if you want to watch the, this YouTube, other YouTube video, uh, this is just the way we're taking our plasmid, we're cutting it open with our restriction enzymes, and we're putting in our gene of interest, but we also need a way to select for or ensure the bacteria that we have have our gene of interest. We can do that through antibiotic resistance or also coloration. Hopefully this is a just hopefully overview for genetic engineering.